And then we're going to go into uh, the details of user-facing analytics. So you talk about the challenges, right? So the first one is uh, high concurrency queries, right? With user-facing analytics, we want low latency query with thousands of QPS. Right? And for high concurrency workload here, I kind of summarize that into two kinds of different workloads. First is your IO bound workload. These are, you know, you're bounded by either your your disk, right? Your disk means that you're scanning a lot of data, right? Or it's bounded, you know, probably by network IO. It's which you know often happens when your return set is huge, right? You return like 15 million rows of data, and that can cause some trouble, right? And uh, these are all like less complex queries, such as point queries. So these are like selects with a bunch of where's after it, right? And it generally the QPS is a bit higher on the higher end, right? And uh, typically requires latency uh, in the low like tens of milliseconds, right? Like 50 milliseconds on, to, on like often a mass amount of data. I've seen, you know, some customers or some Saros users uh, in the crypto space, right? They're trying to, uh, you know, a lot of transactions and they want to pinpoint a few transactions and return them. And uh, with very high QPS, a lot of billions of rows of data, right? So this is more of your like IO bound workload. And for CPU bound workload, these are all like, you know, CPU becoming the bottlenecks. So what is that? It's, you know, your queries are more complex and uh, there are more like old lifestyle queries with a bunch of joins and aggregations, right? And because the queries are, are intense and, uh, you know, they're sometimes for reports, a lot of them are for like dashboards and reports. And so you want the latency to be at least interactive, right? So here I want to say interactive is maybe, uh, you know, it, the query returns in the, during the attention span of a normal human being, like maybe uh, like a second or, you know, sub second or in the low second, right? And uh, normally for these kind of workload, uh, the, uh, the QPS is not that high. And uh, so here we talk about some solutions, right? So first, uh, for those IO bound workloads, so basically two things you need to we need to do. The first is to to scan the least amount of data possible, and to reduce and to reduce to have the least number of disk assets that we do, right? And so this is kind of like a general idea. And how to do this? This is this works in Star Rocks, but also works in other solutions too, right? And first one is bucketing, right? This is a strength of Star Wars. We can, you know, I, I would say this as a, you know, a fine grain control over how your data is distributed uh, in your nodes, right? And, uh, you know, you if you have, uh, you know, you want to filter on uh, like ID role, right? And you can, you know, put that ID role as a bucket, bucket key, and so, you know, because I, but ID is pretty high cardinality, right? So probably going to fit in one, one small bucket, right? And uh, so every time during a query, you just directly go to that bucket, scan that one bucket, and that's all, you know, it needs to do. So, you know, do bucket pruning and, um, and uh, really uh, accelerates your query, right? And also you want to pick a high cardinality column to, uh, to avoid data skew, right? And this is good. And second, you can use, you know, those secondary indexes, right? Uh, first, you can set an order key. So a lookup is, uh, runs in, in log in, it's much faster, right? And you can also use Saras provides bitmap and blue filter index and um, to even, you know, accelerate uh, the point lookups even more, right? And uh, we have customers that use bitmap index on, you know, on, on a huge, huge billions of rows and get like tens of milliseconds of, um, of response time for a single query. Right? And uh, yeah, and all of these indexes are, are cached in memory. So if you use them, you have uh, like moderate amount of memory, you can avoid a lot of disk assets too. Right? And the third one I want to say is, you know, more on the hardware. So IO is probably one of the easiest thing to, uh, to scale. Uh, especially for for drives, right? So you want to configure like multiple high performance SSD drives if you're uh, if you're doing like high concurrency point point lookups and uh, right. 
And Starlight is actually support that. The more SSD you put on it, uh, the faster it's going to go, the linear scale. And also, you want to have good network, right? Good, good, good network in terms of latency or and in terms of throughput if your return set is huge, right? And uh, then let's go to um, more kind of like CPU bound workload. And uh, this, you know, the CPU is put at work. So what we want to do is to actually minimize the amount of computation a CPU has to do during a, during the query execution, right? Uh, there are basically two ways to summarize to do this. First is through pre-computation. So you just anticipate what is going to be queried uh, by the user, right? And you prepare that result beforehand, right? Pre-computation, pre-aggregation, normalization, right? Or you can use uh, the previous result from other users for, or from the same user, right? And you reuse the result or the partial result to take load off your CPU, right? First, you need a kind of like an intelligent hierarchical like caching system, right? So here, there's two kinds of cache. The uh, first kind of is like a final result cache, right? So this is the result, the final result is cache. So, uh, so the query and the scan data needs to be identical, right? And this is very useful for, you know, for folks like me, you know, when I use the application, it's a button. I just like to click on it. I don't know why. And, uh, and um, yeah, and uh, this definitely does well for that. And, uh, but it's, it's just a final result cache, right? A lot of users build this into their application layer. And, but it doesn't really solve the problem of, you know, like for a dashboard, right? The underlying data is always changing and the queries are not identical at all. And uh, they're similar, you know, follow, follow a kind of like a structure, but not really identical, right? And Saras has this query cache feature, it stores the intermediate result cache right? after the first uh, aggregation, right? Uh, first local aggregation, right? So you can accelerate um, aggregations and aggregated queries and also multi-table aggregated queries. So for those uh, local joins, it can be, uh, be accelerated as well. Right, and uh, for this, your data doesn't need to be identical. Right, it can include like more partitions, and uh, we can do this um, uh, uh, reuse like part of the result from the old partition and new partition union together. This kind of thing, or if your query is not like like actually identical, as long as they are um, uh, semantically equivalent, works too. Right, or, or else you have uh, append only data, it works too, right? And the two cache doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't uh, replace each other, right? It, it works for different scenarios, right? And both of them are extremely useful, right? For user facing analytics. And then it's uh, pre computation, right? And Starrox has, or Seller Data has, uh, very good uh, join capabilities. Right? We do on the fly join, probably the fastest in, uh, in our track now. Right? But for a lot of the high concurrency uh, scenario, you still need to do some denormalization. Right? Join is still an expensive uh, operation. Right? And instead of doing that on an upstream, you know, like a stream processing tool, you know, uh, doing a stateful uh, operation, you know, do a join in a stream fashion and, and then insert into a flat table, uh, what we offer is, uh, what Staros offer is a partial update. So you can have, let's say, a table with 200 columns or 100 columns, right? And you can have a stream that updates like 50 and the, the other stream of updates the other 50, right? So you don't have to maintain your upstream, you know, like stateful stream computing uh, uh, tool to do this, right? You can do it directly in Starrox. And this is offered uh, uh, through the primary key table, right? With the primary key index. And second, um, you know, do pre-aggregation, real-time incremental pre-aggregation through Starbucks single table or synchronous materialized views and uh, aggregated table, right? And uh, right, and uh, those are all like uh, streaming, uh, not streaming, but incrementally updated. So the amount of computation to update the aggregate table and MVs are not really dependent on the historical data set. It's only dependent on the on the on the the new ones, right? On the, on the new ones right there, right? You can take a look at that. I talk about this extensively during my last webinar, and you can check that out too. That's 3.0 update. 
And there's a new feature coming in. Uh, it's called a generated column. Right? This is uh, basically like a Matrix view, but Matrix a column, <laughs> right? So this is especially useful, you know, if you have semi structured data like JSON, right? you want to do some uh, computation, you can predefine some computation there. Uh, and uh, or you have some like incredibly uh, complex uh, regular expressions, right? And uh, this can work uh, really well too. 